Welcome to our world channel. Facebook verification badge for a fee. Is free social media over? If you don't pay for the product, you are the product. That famous phrase has long been associated with the social media business model. And it means that as a user you do not pay money to use applications such as Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Because you are simply giving up something else, your attention, and then your data that they are in turn sold to advertisers. But it seems that this free model of social media, which relies on ads, is under several strong pressures, and we may be on the verge of a new era in which we may have to pay a subscription in order to access the services of these applications. Meta verified. Last Sunday, February 19, Meta became the latest and largest social media company to announce a paid version of its products with the launch of Meta Verified. The new service will give subscribers the blue authentication mark, in addition to some other benefits, including increased chances of profile appearing in search results, increased access to posts and content to more followers, and a higher visibility of comments. Other privileges also include providing additional protection for the account from impersonation of its owner, as well as the ability to communicate directly with support staff to provide assistance with common problems related to the account. Meta stated that the process of documenting the account will help protect it and prevent its seizure, and in the event that this happens, subscribers to the service will be able to speak directly with support to help restore their accounts. But that does not mean that this is an emergency helpline. It is not possible to subscribe to the service if the account is banned or stolen. In these cases the user must submit the usual request for help to support Facebook and Instagram. Meta will start testing the new service in Australia and New Zealand, and will be available globally this year. The monthly subscription will cost $11.99 on the web version or $14.99 through the App Store for iPhone and Google Play for Android devices. Meta's announcement of its paid service comes a few months after Elon Musk announced a new Twitter documentation program with a monthly subscription of $8, part of the Blue Twitter service. While Meta, and its founder, Zuckerberg, is famous for copying various features from its competitors, this time it may not be just an imitation as it is simply part of a new trend in the social media industry. Industry-wide orientation. During the recent period, the Snapchat application provided a monthly subscription with additional benefits. YouTube also provides a monthly subscription service with a number of advantages, including watching videos without ads, as well as the Discord platform and the Telegram application. And now the entry of the Meta company, which has the largest applications in terms of size and number of users, confirms the new trend towards stratification in social media. Adam Mosseri, head of the Instagram platform, confirmed this idea himself in a video clip he posted on his Twitter account, saying, this is our first step into the world of subscriptions, which we view as an industry-wide trend. We've seen YouTube do it, Twitter, Discord, Reddit, and more. Elon Musk himself summed up the issue of Meta following in Twitter's footsteps in one word, imperative. Previously, obtaining the blue verification mark in the profile was free. A copy of a government ID card and some other information must be sent, and in some cases, like journalists, he must send links to articles on the platform he writes for, then wait for the documentation process to complete. Then everyone knows that this account is officially registered and approved by the platform as that person's official account, which is useful for political and public figures, celebrities and journalists in the first place. We don't know how much of an impact Meta Verified will have on Facebook usage, but it's clear that, going forward, if you want to be more visible, protect your identity, and access support directly in those apps, you'll have to pay for those services. But the important question here is, who will actually need to pay this subscription to get the blue tick, and how does Meta benefit from it? Who will pay the subscription?
While Twitter is a useful platform for knowing and transmitting data, information or news, the Facebook and Instagram platforms are more geared towards the lifestyle and various activities in which the user shares the various events of his day. So, in the case of the average user, he probably won't even need the authentication mark or even the other features in the new service. However, the idea of subscribing to a documentation service may be attractive to influencers, content makers, companies, and business owners. These are the ones Meta is trying to target with the new subscription. For example, the value of the influencer marketing industry on social media reached about $16 billion in 2022. Despite the growth of the TikTok application, the Instagram application is still the most popular platform for influencer marketing with many different brands. There are also more than 200 million active companies on the Facebook application alone. So many business and business owners who run their businesses on the platform may pay for the new service as the next logical step in promoting their business because it will bring them more customers and give them confidence and reliability. More. When Twitter introduced the Twitter Blue subscription to verify accounts, the idea was to reduce the number of fake accounts on the platform. But the plan backfired in the end. And it led to a series of fake accounts with the blue verification mark, and the names of famous personalities such as the famous basketball player LeBron James. It has come to the point that there are ordinary accounts with the blue verification mark that spread different kinds of false and misleading information on the platform. But how much is the total number of subscribers to this service at the present time? An internal document indicated that about 180,000 people in the United States pay for subscriptions to the Twitter platform, including the blue Twitter service, as of mid-January. As the document states, this number represents about 62% of the total global subscribers to this service, which means that the total reaches 290,000 global subscribers. Or less than only 0.2% of the monthly active users on the platform. As for Meta, it has a better chance than Twitter of finding more customers to subscribe to its new service. Because of its huge size, and most importantly, it has many influences and companies who run real businesses on its platforms. And therefore it has greater chances of making an easy profit from that service. For example, Bank of America predicts that Meta could get 12 million Meta-verified subscribers within about a year. Which could give it an additional revenue of about $1.7 billion. But most of the benefits that a subscription offers are things that already exist, there isn't any new or powerful feature. All Meta did was put those services into a small package together, and then present it as a new product worth subscribing to. But if Meta wants to expand the range of subscriptions, it must provide more and more powerful options and benefits, because all of these things will often not entice the average user to pay the monthly subscription. In general, for the average user, social networking sites may have arrived too late for the subscription party, because content streaming services, such as Netflix and Disney+, Plus, music applications such as Spotify, gaming sites, and even some popular news and content platforms, all offer monthly subscriptions for their services, and this of course, it will not leave room for the user to pay for subscribing to social media especially if it does not provide strong services or advantages. On the ground, when it seemed to Netflix that it had reached a state of saturation in subscriptions, it began offering subscription systems at a lower price with the display of ads, and in order to maintain its subscribers in light of the current competition. It recently decided to reduce its subscription prices in more than 30 countries around the world. Find additional revenue. Mark Zuckerberg's empire is built on billions of user data and advertisers who pay huge sums to make use of that data. However, this model is under pressure on several fronts during the recent period. Meta platforms provide a gold mine of data for advertisers. Facebook alone has 2 billion daily active users, 
while the total number of users across all of the company's platforms, Instagram, WhatsApp and Messenger, reaches about 3 billion users. Revenue comes from creating profiles of these users and selling them to advertisers, who then target ads to targeted customers based on their specific interests and background. This model, based on ads, accounted for about 98% of Meta's revenue, amounting to $116.6 billion in the past year 2022, but it faces several obstacles. In 2021, Apple made several changes to its privacy settings with the launch of the app tracking transparency feature, which forces apps on the App Store to ask the user's permission in order to track their online activity, which is the primary data collection method for targeted ads. Of course, many users chose not to track on iPhones, which made it difficult for marketers to target users with their ads, and this led to less ad spending on meta platforms. In addition to the idea of a huge investment in Metaverse, on which Meta has actually spent billions of dollars so far, without any return through it. Then came the difficult economic conditions. And the current recession, and companies began to reduce their spending more on advertising, and thus social media platforms witnessed a slowdown in growth during 2022. Unlike Twitter which Elon Musk is trying to completely re-engineer its business model, by prioritizing subscriptions at the expense of the ads model. Meta does not necessarily wait for new subscriptions to completely replace ads, and generate huge revenue for them, but in the end it is just an easy way to earn some money. Extra money. But does it make sense to pay money for basic social media services? Expensive social contact. If someone steals your credit card and impersonates you, you expect the bank to protect you. Simply put, the consumer expects a basic level of customer service provided by the company. So it's understandable why some users reacted to the news of the new Meta subscription with some anger. Asserting that some of those basic services, such as customer support and account security, should be free in the first place. You will always find many problems with customer support and security through social media, and you can often not trust them. Apps like Facebook, with 2 billion users, have not expanded or developed some of their core services, such as customer support to help those whose accounts have been banned, and the process of verifying accounts has always been selective. Often, those who receive interest are VIP users, such as government figures, media, or other celebrities, or even someone who knows an employee who works within the Meta company itself. So, while Meta appears to be charging a monthly subscription for something it used to provide for free, in reality it is charging money for a service that it hasn't done very well in the first place. This is a very easy win. We also expect, by default, that the algorithms of these platforms will treat all accounts and content equally. The idea that Meta mentioned paying money means getting more spread is troubling. Similarly, the Twitter platform had recently announced that only blue Twitter subscribers would be able to access the two-factor authentication process via SMS on the phone number, and that the rest could use an application or other means for the authentication process. And Elon Musk's argument was that Twitter pays about $60 million a year to telecom companies on bogus authentication letters. But in the end, it was a basic service that was free. And it changed and turned into part of the paid subscription to Twitter. If this continues in the same vein, we may see more paid services on social media platforms soon. You might, for example, have to pay to tweet, subscribe to post longer videos, upload higher quality photos to Facebook, or provide better filters on Instagram. There are a lot of ideas we wouldn't want Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg to exploit, and it would be down to a blue verification mark and a few calls to customer service. Rather than suddenly finding that social media is too expensive to use. Thanks for watching, and see you in a new video.